Hello, Greg from Balloon Markets here and welcome to BMTV. I hope you're well and your week has been good so far. Before we start, I just want to say a big thank you to Chris Adamo. Obviously, Chris came, I was going to say came down, he didn't come down, he was in Australia, so we Skyped. And um, yeah, it was a really great show with Chris last week. Um, normally, when we do a BMTV business, we don't get as many views as we do when we do a how to create something out of balloons. But I have to say, over the weekend, we've had more than 1,100 views of that video. So Chris has definitely got something that people are excited about learning. So it's an hour-long show. But what Chris talks about, I could talk to Chris for ages because he's a bit like me. He really likes systems and processes and things that are going to make life easier and things that are going to save you time. And the business side of things uh, when you are running a business is really what is going to help you grow that business. The, the balloon decoration, if that's what you do, is, is good. You need that. That's the basics. You need to be able to create amazing things and sell those. But what you do on the business rather than in the business that is is really what's going to take it to that next level for you. So Chris has got some really great tips if you've not watched that show. For instance, if you do deliveries, he uses Google Maps. And you just think, Google Maps, that's so easy. But in a way that I've never seen it used before, that actually saves him a lot of time and a lot of money. And you can tweak it and change it depending on how many deliveries you've got. Absolutely fascinating. And then he talks about how to create a, a page on your website. So all the questions that you ask a customer, you might spend half an hour asking a customer, they've got to fill in online and it just saves time. And it does something for your brand as well. So it was a really, really good show. Chris, thanks so much for coming down. As always, it was great to talk to you and I hope to get to talk to you again soon. Right, I've got a couple of apologies to make. The first is to do with emails, automatic emails that should have been sent over the weekend from the website, either confirming your order or dispatch or something like that, or they email me when available emails. They, uh, there was a problem and apparently it was caused by Microsoft and where our website is located on the server in the data center, it's got an IP address. That's basically where your website is on the internet. And um, those IP addresses for the, that data center, for some reason, were blocked accidentally by Microsoft. I'm told that they're unblocked now. It was just an accident. Microsoft didn't mean to do it. So the auto automatic emails should be going out now as usual. But please, we're filming this on Monday for Thursday. If something is still going on on Thursday, hopefully we would have noticed it. But if you are, you are having issues or you're not getting your emails, please, please, please do get in touch. But they should be fixed. So just apologies to anybody that might have been affected and not had a confirmation email or something like that over the, the weekend. Oh, I would say though, if you were waiting for an email me when available email, one of the notifications, if you've received that, or you should have received that, but you've not received it, I'd probably go back and just make sure you hit that button again, just to be sure, um, particularly for something like a super stuffer. If you've been waiting for it and you're absolutely relying on that email coming in, click on it again and you want to be, we're getting super stuffers in by the way, and they're going out within 24 hours of us getting them in or they're being ordered within 24 hours of us getting them in. So um, yeah, something to be aware of. So yeah, please go back and, and if there was something specific you were waiting for, um, you might want to click that button again. Now the other apology is for once again, our, our current delays, the current situation. I put a post out, I responded to a post on one of the Facebook groups and obviously I've done the updates over the last couple of weeks or so. We're kind of back to the situation we were in with the first lockdown. We, when the second lockdown was announced, we just got so many orders over that first weekend and it put us right back where we, where we were. So it's a bit, the way I look at it is, you know when you, it's a bank holiday and you go traveling somewhere and you listen to the traffic news on the radio and you hear, oh, there's a traffic jam here because of this, this accident and traffic jam there because somebody's broken down or whatever. And then you hear the ones that they say are down to just the sheer volume of traffic. And that's the situation we're in. It's, we're getting through it, but it just takes time for us to, to get through it. So I, I really do apologize. We have actually increased the number of people that we have working in the warehouse. We're up the absolute maximum we could safely have in the warehouse. So we're adding an evening shift again, as we did back at the, the beginning of the first lockdown. Um, but we've just, our, our sales have just been going like that. And then again, they've gone up like that all of a sudden because of this second lockdown. And so we need to be able to get more people in when there's not other people in. So we are getting through it. We promise we will do our absolute best 
to get through it. So if you are, if you're not aware, on the top of the website there's a red banner and that tells you exactly how many days it is until we're able to dispatch your order. So it is accurate, we do update that every single day, Monday to Friday. And if it says it's gonna be four or five days until we dispatch your order, as long as that might sound, that is actually pretty accurate. We might send it out early if we manage to catch up. There's a chance that we might have to send it out later, but we, we try very hard not to do that. Um, but I think we've only had to do it once. But um, yeah, please, please, please bear with us. And thank you to everybody that does continue to order from us. We are doing absolutely everything we possibly can. Um, when you do place your order, please check. It will tell you exactly how many days it is until it's going to be dispatched. So if it's on Monday and it says four working days until it's dispatched, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it will be dispatched. So you would get it the following week. So please bear that in mind. I'd love to be able to say we can just turn that off overnight and just, you know, get back to normal. But just the, the volume of orders that we've been receiving, um, unfortunately, there's only so fast you can do it. I guess if you're a balloon decorator, it's like having a hundred decoration jobs in a day with arches and demi arches and all the rest of it. You, there's just no way you can do it, but you'll eventually get through it if there wasn't obviously a time limit as the, there is if you're decorating. So yes, please bear with us. And uh, I apologize once again, and hopefully we'll get through that pretty quickly. Now talking of delays, we have noticed that Royal Mail seem to be struggling a little bit as well. So Royal Mail, second class in particular, and I think probably Royal Mail are in a similar situation to everybody. There's a bit of a backlog. And of course, the second class are clusters probably not as urgent. And so oh, we'll get to those eventually. We'll get to those eventually and probably get put back all the time. So we have noticed, we have, we're actually saying 10 working days for second class, which is two weeks. If you need something urgently, I recommend that you use the courier services. So either the Parcel Force or the DPD courier services don't use the Royal Mail ones. First class doesn't seem to be quite as bad, but I still wouldn't be. If you're going to order something for dispatch whenever it's due to be dispatched and expect it the next day, I probably wouldn't take that risk at the moment. So it's just a, a bit of a heads up, something we've noticed there with Royal Mail and particularly as we're coming into peak season with um, obviously Christmas and everything else. So please be aware of that. And talking of Royal Mail, we had, well, I noticed on a local Facebook group, not a balloon one, just a local Facebook group, um, about a scam. And it's, we'll put it on the screen now, and it's um, basically an email from Royal Mail. It's not Royal Mail. And it's saying, click here, um, and there's a re-delivery charge to, to deliver something that you missed where you were out or something. Obviously, Royal Mail don't do that, so, um, but don't click on it. It's just not worth it. The, a key thing to notice is that you can, it can say it's from Royal Mail in the email address, but in brackets, it's normally got the actual email address, or if you look at that email address, open it up, you can see what the actual email address is. And quite often it'll be something completely random, 123abc.com or something crazy like that. <clears throat> That's a key indicator that this is probably not quite right. And the fact they're asking you to click on something. That's also a bit dodgy as well. I think they're just trying to, it's a numbers game, send it to millions of people. It says it's from HMRC. Oh, is that a check? Yes, I'll have that re-delivered and pay a couple of pounds. So they're looking at volume. So if they send that out to 10 million people, a million people do it. That's two pounds. There you go. That's two million two million pounds. So um, yeah, a bit, just just be aware of it. Apparently there's one uh, for DBD, a bit like that as well. So please just be aware of those. Right, Christmas stock. What, before we come to this, I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the stock situation. We are starting now to run out and the manufacturers are running out of some stock that we therefore can't get in and can't sell. We're starting to run out of it just to let you know that some stuff is going. However, at the same time, we've got some new stock that we still haven't received yet, Christmas stock, which is why I've brought up some of this stock here today, is I think people are gonna to have to order for Christmas. You're already ordering for Christmas, obviously, but having to order later, sort of closer to Christmas as, as time goes on, because the stock is, it's all obviously from the first lockdown when manufacturers um, back in April and May, the actual factories um, where they were produced were locked down uh, and closed. 
so that delay is now coming through. It's getting much better, as I said a few weeks ago, but it's still a bit of a delay. Manufacturers are still struggling to get all the stock that we all need, but they are getting there. So it just means that some of the stock that is due to come in is coming in later than we really want it. So if you look on the new products page at balloonmarket.co.uk, you will see that some of them are in zero. If they're in the new products section and it's zero, it normally means that we've not yet had them. Not always, but normally it means that we've not yet had them. If it's something else that's not in the new product section, in all likelihood we have had it in and then we've run out of it. We might still be getting more in, but to help you there, if we are getting rid of some, so if we've sold out everything and there's no more available to us, we're gonna turn that product off the website. So it just means there's, there's no confusion. But if you're in the new product section, looking for some of the new products, then you will see zero. That just means, you'll see a lot of zeros because we get them onto the website before they've actually been uh, delivered to the building. And once they're in here and we book them in, then instantly they're live. So it just allows us to, to get them live as fast as possible. So yes, please order uh, as far in advance as you can, not just because of the delivery delays, but just because of the stock availability. Now, our European customers, hello everybody out there in Europe land. Um, I hope you're well. You might want to allow a little bit um, longer than you usually would for your orders for a couple of reasons. First of all, the reasons I just said about stock availability, but also Brexit. Yes, as you know, we left the EU, apparently. Um, it doesn't look, we're getting very, very close to the uh, end of the grace period where we're trying to figure out if we can have relationships with other countries within Europe and trade deals and all the rest of it. It's looking less likely to happen, but because I've said that, hopefully what will happen now, I said it filming on Monday, by the time it comes to Thursday, there'll be trade deals and I'll just look stupid. Well, I'm happy with that. I'd much rather look stupid and have trade deals than not. But anyway, in case that's not gonna happen, which as I say, is looking highly likely, um, you might want to order uh, as far in advance as possible. If you are placing an order and you would normally order 20 of something and we've only got 10, and then you just wait for us to get the other 10 in, then you don't want to be doing that. You only want to order whatever we've got in stock. The reason being, if you wait a couple of weeks and then we ship it out, say, in the middle of December, but it only arrives in January, you are then going to pay tax on that. So you, you, if you do it before December and it arrives with you before December, uh, before January, sorry, then you will not need to worry about paying the, the extra tariffs. So we're going to be paying extra tariffs when we buy from Europe. So we're going to be placing some quite big orders with um, Grabo and our other European suppliers. But, you know, I recommend that you, you do the same as well. So and, and order a little bit more than you probably would, because if you're then going to order in the new year, you're going to, as I say, have to pay more for it in the form of a tariff. But fingers crossed, I, I really hope we don't have to go down that route. I really hope there's something at the last minute. But we will see. My other stock I want to tell you about, we don't actually have yet. And it's Valentine's Day. And I was on the, the new products page scrolling down. And I saw these Valentine's Day balloons and I just thought they looked awesome. So I thought I'd show them to you. I was going to bring them up and show them to you and then realize we don't have any in because they're brand new products. And people have started to order quite a lot of Valentine's Day stuff now. So um, I just want to show you on the screen because I think these are brilliant, brilliant designs by Anagram. So well done, Anagram. Nail on the head once again. And um, yeah, I think they're, they're fantastic. I particularly like the heart-shaped one with the, the, the rainbow. So... That's great. Keep it up. Right now, let's talk about this stock here in front of me. As I say, I think people are going to be ordering Christmas stock a little bit later into December than they you, we would normally. And so I've just brought a few more Christmas bits up. So we've got these honeycomb decorations. We've got the Santa, we've got the snowman, and we have the hat. Also got these hanging snowball decorations. They're basically balls of cotton wool on string but different sizes and you put them outside a window or inside a window and it just looks like um there's very large snowball and snowball snowflakes snowballs are they snowballs it says snowball hanging decoration but they're quite small snowballs anyway you put them outside the window it makes it look all festive now over here now this is really important this is the santa magical key now you're going to need one of these if you don't have a chimney. Obviously, when Santa comes, he goes down the chimney. What if you live somewhere there's no chimney? Well, you've got to leave this magical key for him so he can get in. So that's what this is. So you need to have one of those if you don't have a chimney. Um, and other Santa things, I mean, 
If Santa, when Santa's there on Christmas Eve and it's snowing, you'll have footprints, so don't worry about it. But if you want to create a bit of a festive feel, um, then you can just do this before Christmas. So we've got Santa's footprint and we've got the reindeer's footprints as well. So just a bit of fun. Now, if there's any children watching and you've got one of these in your house, Elf Surveillance, be very, very good because this is a direct camera to Santa. That's right. And if that little red light is on, he's seeing what you're doing. So if you're being naughty and not nice, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, the Elf Surveillance camera, very, very good for, for keeping an eye on the children. Right. Now over here we have... A lot more of the, uh, we've been increasing our range of artificial flowers, artificial greenery. I guess this is neither really, because it's not green and it's, well that one is, but not green and not flowers. But these would be greenery, but they're, they're, they've been glitterized, if that's a word. And we've got ferns and we've got eucalyptus sprays and things like that. And I just wanted to bring a selection of them up, just so you can see the different colors of the glitter, the silver, the gold, the rose gold. And that's, that's a bit of a darker silver here. I can't remember what that's called. But you can see the, the difference there. And Christmas is quite glittery. So I, I thought they were fun. I would say some of them have the plastic bag on them. But even the ones with the plastic bag, they still have some glitter going down the stem. Some don't have a plastic bag. I'm not sure how we're packaging these. I'd like to think the guys in the warehouse are putting them in plastic bags. But I will go down after I film this and find out if that is the case. Um, but... If you work with glitter, you know what it's like. You get it everywhere. I'm sure I've got it on me now after just putting them on the table. And then we've got this. I really should learn what things are before I bring them up. A green glitterized plant of some description. Um, uh, again, that's just great. Just, it, just the glitter adds to something, adds Christmas to something, uh, whatever it is you're creating. Uh, over here, we have, this is deco mesh, and this is, what's it called? Glitter mesh ribbon. Yes, yes, I got it right. Glitter mesh ribbon. And this stuff is the one with a wired edge. So it's got a wire on it, which I assume is flexible and you can move around and mold in whatever way that you, you choose to. Um, so we've got that, but we've also got the glitter mesh runner. So it doesn't have the wire on the edge, so you can't mold it as much, um, but it's just obviously wider. So you can do all sorts of things with that, as you can with the deco mesh. Now we've never had deco mesh before. We've only had it this year. And talking to, to Oak Tree, and they asked, if, do you sell the deco mesh? And I said, well, no, what is it? And they said, oh, we sell tons of it. So uh, you want to get it? So we got it and we sell tons of it. And, um, but I, I didn't really know what it was for. So I had a look on Google. You can do all sorts of things with it. You can wrap things, you can uh, create volume, you can add things to organic designs. But what a lot of people are doing at the moment is uh, making wreaths out of this. So you can make a, a wreath that's not got any, any plants in it or anything like that, or any balloons. You can make it just from this, or you can you know, have a combination, all sorts of things. But you sort of fold it on itself backwards and forwards, and it's like a big fancy bow almost. Um, we've got lots of colours. I've only brought the three on the table there. I guess that's very Christmassy, that one. And you've got the gold one. And you've got one that's probably a bit more, more spring-like. Um, but yeah, really, it's going really well. I, I Actually, I'm going to make that a question of the week. If you're a deco mesh user, what do you use it for? Leave your comments down below on Facebook and on YouTube, please. But yeah, really interested to, to find out how people are using it. I'll send us your pictures. That'd be great. And the last product I want to talk about is this Oasis ring. Now, if you're not aware, if you're not a florist, you may not be aware, but Oasis is this sort of foam. Well, Oasis is the manufacturer, but everybody just calls this foam Oasis. And it is um, a foam that you put water on it and it just absorbs the water really well and holds the water in there. And then you put live, live plants in there and it keeps them alive, but you can create a wreath or um, whatever you want out of uh, this shape or whatever shape it is of uh, Oasis that you've got. You can just get blocks of Oasis uh, and all of that sort of stuff. We're going to start selling more of this as soon as we've got more space. Um, but we we have these in because it's wreath season. And uh, you don't need to obviously use it for live plants. You can just like the, um, remember, eucalyptus. That's what they are, eucalyptus stems. You can, you've got these little wires sticking out and you could create something um, with these as well. So we've got the two sizes and they are available right now. Again, you creative people will probably be able to use those far better than I ever would. Right, that is it for this week. As I say, the question of the week is, 
Deco Mesh users, how do you use your Deco Mesh? Be really interested to find out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you're not subscribed, please do and hit that bell icon so you get every a notification of every video that we upload. Stay as safe as you possibly can, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks. Bye.